In this episode of At The Dinner Table, we share some absolutely wild memories from the college tour we did in late 2022, where we played our original music in frat houses, dorms, and funeral homes near SUNY Purchase, Binghamton, Oneonta, and Syracuse. We answer the question some of you have been asking us for the past few months and explain why we aren't playing Sunday Dinner live shows right now. And then we go on to share some brand new live show opportunities in the near future. Later in the episode, we talk about the natural tension between the business and artist mindset and how we are going about finding balance. From there, an unexpected conversation emerged where we dropped absolute gems regarding the way artists identify with their work and how evolving as an artist has more to do with failure than you may think. The obvious trajectory of the conversation took us to discussing Taylor Swift and how the four of us are transitioning Swifties. I'm kidding, I'm half chubbed. Anyway, <laughs> next time, they're like, guys, show up at this time for sound check, and the guy is literally fucking hammering nails into a piece of wood, <laughs> building the stage. I'm like, what is going on right now? It's your job as an artist to regulate. Let's we are not our here. art. But do you see what you just did there? What? Was instead of controlling the emotions, you controlled the reaction to the yeah, emotions. Exactly. Yes. But and I that's still, the key. You right. can't control emotions. No. Like emotions are inevitable. No, but if you the more you control them, the worse they become. Exactly. Yeah. But but how you evolve as a human being, and in our case as as artists who are dedicated to a, a craft, it's changing the way that you react to, to failure. We are back with the Sunday Dinner Music Group podcast at the dinner table. This is a huge week that we have because Nick Spat just oh released God. a song. Woo! Let's go. Yeah, let's go, Nick. Nice with you. Out now, motherfucker. <laughs> Nick, how do you feel, bro? The song is out. Okay, so I was saying this to Joe before um, and Kalea as well. This is like probably the first time ever that I've released a song or been a part of a song where I was literally 100% like satisfied with it. Like yeah. not a single thing I would change about that record at all. I listen to it. I'm like, this is, this is it. I'm hundred percent sure about this. Dude, that's great. Yeah. That's awesome. And I don't know if that's because I'm getting better and it probably is, but also I think just because I'm learning to commit now and I'm learning to just be like fully there for myself as an artist. That's it, yeah. bro. That's beautiful. Yeah. What a great way to spend a week. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Damn. All right. Well, how did everybody else's week go? Everything was good? Everything's a great week, man. Yeah? Just chilling. Besides the allergies, you know? Allergies? <laughs> yeah. It's November. In the fall, I get fall allergies. Dude, that it's is crazy. such a myth. Fall allergies are literally a myth. I say <laughs> that's kind of I say that's kind I don't get allergies out here. No, I don't crazy. get spring. <laughs> no, I crazy. get the fall. But um, <laughs> This week was good, man. I, had, I, I was sick for the first half, but other than that, like... The fact that we started this podcast kept me busy, bro. Like, and and watching, I got to be honest with you guys, like watching it four times, I missed you guys, you know? I was like, Facts. look at this. I'm having so, much, we're having so much fun. We're hanging out, you know? It was kind of crazy to see how many like inside jokes we have. Yeah. And yeah. just like how, how like connected we all are yeah. and like how on the same page we are. Yeah. yeah. You know it especially I mean? helps that we're sitting like oh, three yeah. centimeters from like each this? other. Well, well, we don't have a wide angle lens yet. I feel so. like we'll get there. Don't worry. We will. We're yeah. still a DIY podcast. Um, <laughs> I just feel like we have to sincerely apologize for the gum chewing in last week's <laughs> podcast. Um, if you are watching right now, God bless you. Because I, if you got through the first minute of that one without cringing, you we, love, we love you for You're that. Built we love, we love you for that. that. Yeah. But yep. it was a great conversation though. So if you like, if you like stuck with it and then ignored the gum chewing, you're a real one. It sounded like a farm, like a bunch of cows. Just <laughs> yeah, like, we were cattle. I mean, that being said, we can start like an ASMR thing, but like we should just keep <laughs> it separate from the podcast. Yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's a, a different brand for sure. Different brand. Yeah. yeah. That's you crazy. ever seen that stuff on TikTok Live where they're like, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah dude. Come join like my life. Weirdest. Yeah, I'm like, dude, like, what? That Who shit watches is this crazy, shit? bro. Definitely Who crazy. watches this shit? Oh, my God. All right, guys. Let's come in hot and heavy. Okay. This is, I'm feeling ballsy this week. Oh, I love shit. that. I love episode that. two, sophomore episode. We're feeling crazy. <laughs> sophomore bro. episode is crazy. Yeah, it's like the dude in South Park with the balls on the wheelchair. You ever see that episode? No, no, I've never seen that. Like, it's like you right now, ballsy. Dude, I didn't watch South Park <laughs> as a kid. I feel That's like crazy. I missed out. Seriously, I you missed know? out too. I don't think my parents would allow me to watch South Park. To be honest, really. You. Insert a picture yeah. of balls in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Definitely, bro. My grandma would love that. <laughs> <laughs> so, why are you feeling nutsy? Well, I'm feeling ballsy because because uh, we're we're coming in hot with the questions today. Oh, so, shit. oh question shit. number one that we have here, and I would love to start with Vinny. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> no, that's actually so fucked up. No, I thought of an answer. I thought. Okay, of an answer. Oh, he's got an answer now. Actually, okay. like, mm, 
I feel like you should go first and then I should piggyback off That's you. That's so fine, bro. Let's yeah. do it. <laughs> so the question is, what is the craziest memory while we were playing at Purchase, Binghamton, Oneonta, or Syracuse University? So just to fill everyone in. There you go. Um, we did, uh, I think a year ago, about a year ago, we did yeah. a, a college Crazy. crawl, which is what we were calling it. Mm -hmm. And it's basically just a little mini tour where we went to like a bunch of SUNY schools. And if you're not from New York, a SUNY school is like a state New York school. And we just played a bunch of just dirty, raunchy, fucking insane college shows. Yeah. And it's like literally some of the best moments of my entire life and like best moments of this band. And uh and yeah. yeah. Absolutely, man. It was crazy. I, I want to hear what you have to say. So my, I guess my first my favorite memory was Halloween. We were playing Binghamton at the Fromunda Cheese House. Oh, yeah. 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 oh God. From, from, from Mal the from House. Mal the house. Oh, <laughs> um, which is like our, our buddy Nico's like Fremunda college cheese. house. Uh, and describe the house. It's basically like a haunted house, like on, in the middle of like the worst street in Binghamton, but it's got a great halal spot across yeah. the street. And mm -hmm. not haunt. I don't mean to cut you off. Not haunted because it was Halloween. No, like genuinely haunted, haunted because it was a haunted like house. Like, like it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a funeral home. home. Yeah. 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 Jinx. Yeah, jinx. Wait, no, it actually jinx. was. Yeah. Like oh, there wow. was literally the room where they lived. Like yeah. Nico's office, like the guy that was owning the house. It was literally where they kept the casket. That's hysterical. So, but, but also, we where played. We were playing there. Where we were playing was where the caskets used to be on display. Oh my god! For oh, you're so no way! Oh, that, that makes sense. The that of the makes room. sense. Oh my it's god! Like a, it's like a little stage, like yeah. a little bump. So inside the room, you That's walk sick. in church style, and there's like rows that like used to be there, which is where all the people were. And then boom, the casket was very clearly right there in the wow. little window thing. Yeah, so it's, crazy. It is like suspectly like perfect for performing or for like. Showing something, right? Okay. You know, right, you know, for sure. and it, you know, the fact that it wasn't a dead body was good. It was great. Um, oh yeah. But anyway, yeah. probably my favorite experience, like ever, playing a live show. I don't know why. We were just like, we were just, I don't know. We were in our costumes. We had the like '80s like jumpsuit, like fucking oh, that was my workout. Topic. Fucking. That was my. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, no, sorry. Oh, good. But I think my favorite memory was just like playing that set, bro. The crowd was electric. Like we won them over in like 0.5 seconds. Um, and then we had a little funny moment like at the end of our set where the mm -hmm. somebody from the band that was going on after us don't do this if you're a band, by the way. Yeah, do not do this. Especially when we drove three hours with all of the house gear, basically like helped put together the entire yeah, show, PA everything. Yep. Um, we're in the last song and they, this kid just comes out and he, on the stage. He's like, yo, like wrap it up. Hurry the fuck up. And I literally just turned around and like the whole crowd hears this because my mic is live. I'm like, dude, get the fuck off the stage right now. <laughs> in the middle of and the song. And he literally just, we're in the middle of the song. We're yeah. in the middle of the song. Yeah. And he just blanks and just walks off stage. Yeah. And I was like really tight, but we ended up like hashing it out after and like they were actually really cool like great band i won't say who they are yeah um because i actually don't remember their name so yeah. <laughs> super memorable but um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah great show so that's my favorite it probably favorite part about that oh <laughs> no, uh, that was the name of the band. <laughs> no the band's name was leave it no it's all bleep yeah okay bleep. um so i can oh, go geez. next then if you want to think. Wait, can I just say, I remember shivers going down my spine when Nick said, get the fuck off the stage. I felt like such a badass through association. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Because yeah. like Nick said that and I was just like, yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. 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 Band, and you know man. what? I, I think that like plays into our like dynamic as four people, not to get so deep about it, but like if you do something like that, like it's just, it's on site that the four of us like claim that energy yeah, and yeah, we're just yeah, there yeah, like yeah, totally, if totally. i see nick saying like yo get the fuck off the stage the four of us are gonna be like what do you want us to say get the fuck off yeah, the stage yeah you know what i mean yeah. like we're gonna be there they were just they were just nervous also joe's fucking drum solo that night was probably the best one ever. <laughs> and we have a video of it too so we're gonna play that insert <laughs>
Thank you guys. Yeah, that was fun. Cause you know what? When you get down to it, like the pressure, we're just letting loose. You know what yeah. I mean? It was prob that probably so played loose. into it. I yeah. would say. Um, I got one. If go for it, go yeah. for it, Vinny. So we we played um in Binghamton, the same house, same location for SantaCon during Christmas. What is SantaCon? <laughs> San That's actually my topic. Okay. I I was so like foreign because I didn't go to a SUNY school. Um, I went to like a private school on Long Island, and like SantaCon like was so foreign to me. And we were like, we experienced it. Like, it was like, start drinking at what time? 10, like 9, 9 10. Yeah. yeah. I was Later. like, shoot, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like mimosas. And like, it, like, we went to like a house. I forgot what house we were. Yeah. But I was just like, and I didn't drink any of it because I was like, we have to play in the, during the night. Like, we to, and then like people just take like naps for like four hours before they go out again. So it's weird. like a whole day thing. I was like, mm -hmm. you guys drink for five hours and then take a break and then another fucking five hours. It's like, up. it was crazy. But, yeah, I experienced my first SantaCon and it, it was great. So yeah. cool. So weird. So different. I'm not I'm not used to it, but I'm glad I did it. Yeah. I Whenever it. I get memories of that on my camera roll, I'm always going through that. Oh, I'm yeah. always yeah. like I've been asked to revisit this year. I've been thinking about it, but I'm not too sure. To go up for to go to day. Santa. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Yeah, we'll really see. We'll see. We'll see. It's a lot of energy. It's but a lot. um shout out, you know, state schools and shout out Binghamton for that. Of course. Um I'm gonna jump into mine. Um so I think it was the same weekend. We we did a couple college crawl weekends where it was two schools in one. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So the first school we actually did was Oneonta. Yep. And like that one has such a special place for me because it was like the beginning of something that we had like I had no um what are the word like expectations. Yeah. You know, yeah. I had no expectations for this. We're just setting up in a frat house and it's empty and it, you know, cause it's early. The parties haven't started or whatever. We pull the drums in the PAs and it's like, okay, like this is cool. Like we'll do a sound check. I guess we're in a house. What's going on. <laughs> and then like that, not, not even kidding. It was literally in a span of 10 minutes. Everybody knew where they had to be that night. It's a Friday night. Everybody's looking to go out and they hear live music. We got our banner set up and there's just fucking 80 to 100 people filled into this it was insane. house. You couldn't insane. even walk. Insane. I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah, we were like, right. what? We walked. 10 minutes passed and there's 90 people in a room. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't like, yeah. oh, like I hear some music outside. Let me go, like, get me in and check it out. It yeah. was like, boom, there's yeah. people here. There's fucking live music. I want to go see that <laughs> shit. And it was crazy, <laughs> yeah. dude. Like, Oh man! Do you remember like uh, we went around the house because there's like a back entrance where everyone comes in, and we went around, and I there was just a fucking mob of people. Yeah. I was like, they're here for oh, us, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah. What? Yeah. Like yeah. also, big shout out to Jeremy, the homie, bro. Like he set that whole thing up for us and Bless. the whole frat for having us. Like it was a minute ago, but like thank you guys. Appreciate Fuck yeah. that. Fun that was time, one of bro. the best weekends of my life, Sick. dude. Yeah. That was a fun Great fucking set. show. Everyone yeah, was into we, it. Didn't we play Mr. Brightside twice? We did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how you know yeah. it was a college party because everybody wanted Mr. Brightside. Like, we don't take requests unless it's Mr. Brightside it. at yeah. the end of the night. Yes. You yes. know what I mean? Yes. Like, yes. And we're in Oneonta. That was so fun. Matt, didn't some girl try to like take your mic or like sing? Well, yeah, dude. This was, <laughs> oh my God. So, so as I was thinking about this question, I was like, all right, do I go for the moment where I like stepped into the crowd during Mr. Brightside number two, oh, or do I go for like Red Fest? And what I thought about was like definitely Red Fest for this. Okay. Yeah. For right. this, this, is, this is crazy, bro. Yeah, give so, it to us. So we play a show on a Friday night, right? And we're just, you know, at Purchase, the school that uh, two out of the four of us went to. Um, and it was such a great night, like phenomenal, phenomenal crowd. Like we play, shout out to Gray for that. Actually, we shout debuted out mine again and shout that out night Nico too. for Binghamton. That I didn't do that. that. Was, shout out, yeah, shout out Nico. Right. Wait, what'd you say? No, no, I didn't mean cut you off. Shout out Nico for the Binghamton thing. I didn't shout you out. Thank you. Love you, Nico. Yeah, facts. We wouldn't be able to do any of this without a, without the people who who helped yes. us. Yes, it was cool because like every show we played was just like through a friend. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We crashed on friends' couches. Like the tour literally cost us no money, and like we just got like a lot of like upside to it or shout out to it. casey shout out to Polly. of course love every one of them yeah absolutely yeah. you guys are so lit for for giving us a bed to sleep in um but so we play a show it's pretty calm and then we we go home and we sleep for 45 minutes <laughs> maybe 45 minutes is like is generous bro <laughs> yeah honestly i wish i got 45 yeah minutes i was on the futon too I was oh, sleeping in your room. Oh yeah you before were on i moved this in futon yes that is That's crazy. Absurd. We got like two hours. Of a lot's sure. happened on this futon. Anyway, okay. <laughs> so so we end up Boys. so we end up leaving for another gig um, on a Saturday morning, which was maybe like like I said, an hour after we fell asleep, hmm. right? And so we set our alarms for like four thirty. 
we get to the place at like 10 a.m which was like our call time like we were pretty pretty prompt that day yeah, yeah. we yeah. were there right when we show when they told us to show up and i knew it was a red flag when we got there oh my god and they were building the stage <laughs> yeah. red like, flag number one <laughs> they're like guys show up at this time for sound check and the guy is literally fucking hammering nails into a piece of wood <laughs> building the stage i'm like what is going on right now Bro. like you you would have thought that that was like the noise band like performing Liter- their set literally, you know, practicing yeah, literally. their shit yeah. before they went on yeah it wasn't. No, they nope. were building the set. Interpretive hardware tools is the name of the fucking <laughs> act. Industrial. Industrial music. music. They took it so literally, bro. Yeah. Oh, um. God. And so we, we end up waiting from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. to 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6.30 comes around, and we get our call. And we're like, all right, you guys are going on in 15. We were like, <gasps> what? We're what? playing music today? <laughs> yeah. we're, we're doing this? <laughs> Crazy. And 15 minutes before that, literally, we almost left. We, yeah, we I remember. To, we were about we're to, to leave. Yeah, yeah we, we were in your car, Nick, yeah. right? And, and like, you looked at me and you were like, should we just leave? And I was like, honestly, I think we should, dude. Like, this this is, we've been waiting for literally seven hours now, eight hours. Like, <laughs> yeah. it was so ridiculous, dude. And then Kalea comes out with apples <laughs> we were we literally had like a sandwich in the morning and then the rest of the day was just beer yeah. and then oh, kalea brings like a fresh apple and we all split the apple yeah. yep. and it, it rejuvenated. it literally us. changed the whole fucking like night, vultures bro. from the one apple <laughs> <laughs> here's your quarter give me the quarter <laughs> Fuck. she was like our mother like yeah. she literally, was literally bro. like the yep. mother figure mother dearest, yeah. mother, dearest yeah. yep. mother dearest yep absolutely Oh man, that was such a fun time. Great set too. Yeah, I was hallucinating for like half of it though because <laughs> yeah. of how tired I was. Yeah, Dude, yeah, literally? it was the exhaustion hallucination. Yeah, yeah nothing yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and then to expand on the day, we drive to Binghamton. What was the event that night? It was just like a birthday. Wait, no. Oh yeah, you uh, guys had an event. Yeah, but, uh, and we all we all rented. Um, or we checked into a micro hotel. I don't know if that's oh, like yeah. a, people know about the thing. It was like a. It was pretty cool, like like place. Yeah. Um, and then Joey goes out. In Binghamton, so um, <laughs> yeah, that was crazy. I and then my friends, I have friends in Binghamton. They're like, come out. I was like, okay. And then I don't know how I did that night. And then you, you uh, and Kalea, and you, yeah, like, all, I, just, like, I fell asleep instantly in the hotel, and I woke up at like four in the morning to take a piss. And I'm like, where the fuck is Vin? I, I called him like seven times. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way we got 35 minutes of sleep the night before. Just p- stayed this whole day just basically like miserable because of how tired we were. Yeah. And then you just partied all night. I think I was up for two days You're straight. You're a fucking... Yep. I was oh, elsewhere, bro. you know. Oh, fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hang but out. It, it was a fun night. And then I came back to the hotel and we left. And uh, that is slept so for two wild. days straight. Red fuck Fest. That. Shout out Red Fest, bro. Shout out Mike. Love you, Mike. Yeah, yeah Mikey. Mike. Thanks, Bosage. Why don't we move on to the next question? Yeah, this is actually a great. This is a great segue. Yeah. So, um, what what do we mean when we say we're not playing shows because we're not a band right now? Con- controversial. Controversial. Yeah. Quite so- controversial, especially to all the people that were riding with us for uh, for the college crawl. Absolutely. Anybody want to take a stab at this one? I've just gotten this question so many times. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like like how could we not answer this? Yeah, we should. We we owe that to all of the people who you know love seeing us play 100%. yeah yeah and i think it's it's nostalgic for us too because like playing shows was so much fun yeah, as we just illustrated core memories, for you or memories but like at the same time like we have different goals right now and it's not that we're never going to be a band again or play shows again it's literally just that our goals right now are much more aligning with like a record label so we want to sign artists we want to develop uh you know artists like brand and stuff like that we want to develop sunday dinner as an artist um, we want to develop Matthew. Nick Spat wants to develop Nick Spat as an artist. Hell yeah. Hell um, yeah, man. So we're kind of going down different routes. But like once Kalea or someone like goes on tour, we're going to be the band, yeah. dude. 100%. That's going to be our call, right? Exactly. There. Of course. Exactly. We got to do that. So you can catch us like in a couple months, maybe, or a couple years. 100%. Maybe. I envision <laughs> it like us like putting on, putting our superhero costume on the shelf and then like the day crime comes like the light is just shining like right on the <laughs> like Incredibles bro. Yeah, yeah yeah you know what I mean yeah, like so right. I, I gotta put the suit on man yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. if it calls to us like we're gonna do it you know yeah. we're just gonna follow when we need to and and when it's gonna happen is you know anybody's guess but it, it will happen it will we- it did actually I mean we, we played last month we were in Vancouver writing uh, an album with Kalea and we played a show at this venue called The Roxy and like just all of us kind of reminded of how 
much we love being on stage and yeah. how fucking honestly good we are at it. But um, <laughs> but like I think that tours for sure, and also if you saw our um, the Sunday dinner, like Matt and I, we had a senior project when we graduated college, and basically the whole idea was like a multimedia show with us backing the band, but with like tracks, and we featured all the artists that we've worked with over the past couple of years to kind of like sum up college. And basically, we wanna do events like that every you know couple of release cycles so that we can feature all the, the collaborations and artists that we've signed and worked with and shit like that. So stay tuned for stuff like that, for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we gotta start talking about that stuff. Oh, for I'm so sure. excited for that. For sure, for sure. You know? Yeah. Once we have some artists. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, number four. Number three. Number th Oh, I'm so sorry. No, nah, good. You're good. Let's One year goals guys. now that we're a record label. I'll start? Yeah. Please please. All, right, all right, so yeah. Um, now that we're officially a record label for the past couple months, I feel like our... Or I'm just going to say one of our goals is that we're looking to connect with as many artists as possible, and that's broad, but it's actually... I think it's probably the most important aspect of what we're doing, just creating our community wider and wider. Yep. Every single week, talking to new people, um, finding new sounds. That's another thing that's kind of interesting, mm -hmm. difficult about owning a record label is that you have to morph um, into something that you might not always identify with, you yep. know, as an artist yourself. Because yeah. like we said in the first episode, we're all artists, like first, and that's how we feel like we're going to be able to connect with artists in the first place. Um, but honing in on someone else's vision um, is a challenge, mm -hmm. also a goal that, that I think we should put in place that is in place, Absolutely. you know, morphing. Absolutely, absolutely. I love that. Um, Matt, do you have anything? I was going to say that's a gem. It is. <laughs> Joe's the gem dropper. Dude, right? why am I the dropper? gem dropper, okay. bro? Gems, He's the bro. GD master. <laughs> that's crazy abbreviation. <laughs> this is a hard one because I feel like we all are just on the same page about, about the yeah. goals that we want to um, achieve. Definitely. But, um, I would say here's a concrete goal. Um, we would love to have like three to five. I mean, we, we technically have three artists signed right now. Nick Spat, Mac or Matthew and, um, and daddy issues. And if you don't know daddy issues, it's Sawyer who we fucking, he's just the guy. We love this guy. Yeah. Um, Joe and Matt, it's their like little, um, project that I little, it's not a little project. <laughs> it's not. It, well, I mean, it, it, Let's, let's be real. Like, <laughs> you guys need to step it up a little bit, yeah. bro, because that music is fire. They have they have a whole folder. What? You're the biggest fan of Daddy I Issues. I am literally Daddy you Issues' are. biggest fan. I've been hearing this music for <laughs> fucking first. two years, bro, With and I swear to God, I need to. Yeah. I need that shit on my playlist, bro. <laughs> I need it on my playlist. I can't keep going to Dropbox every time I want to hear, like, fucking sunsets, bro. Like, straight up, like... Nah. Yeah. Nah, you're, let's, you're um, so right. Yo, you're everyone so needs to get these motherfuckers yeah. to drop pressure. Release yeah. every month. Um, Pressure's on. But I would love to have, like two or three more just like really 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 solid artists that we believe in clay is obviously one of them mm -hmm. um so that's that's a concrete goal for sure and i, I just want to i want to remain for the artists because like you said at the end of the day the four of us are artists we've always approached the music business from the artist perspective and mm -hmm. like now we're a little bit more on the business side of shit and i feel like i want to preserve the integrity of the artist mindset mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. can i ask a hard question please what um how do you think it's possible that the business side of things can motivate and engage us on our artist side of things? And, or do you feel that the actual business that we do can, can drain you from, from the artistic side of you? How do we find that? How, are you guys having trouble finding that balance? Yeah. Do you, like, how do you feel about the fact that it's not just art and it's not just music? Yeah. It, we, we are in a situation now where we, you know, there's business deals happening. There's you know transactions there's conversations it's not just okay negotiation I mean, yeah. all that yeah. stuff yeah. yeah yeah does anyone want to answer i have an answer but i feel like I'm yeah i would love to go no. like uh, honestly sometimes i just be switching between like the two mm -hmm. like mindset wise right yeah but yeah. it's mm -hmm. it's tough to switch like on the same day yeah, like it's, I'll, it's I'll not have, a very like, seamless transition no 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 it's yeah, not it's sure. not like to the point where i'll literally go through or i think i used to do this more but i used to go through like phases where like i would write for like you know five six weeks straight and it would be like yeah. a writing phase right yeah. you know what i mean and then like i feel like now i'm in more of like a business phase where like i was looking for production deals like we're working with shout out to sophie said like shout we're working sophie. with her on like what three projects yeah. right now yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 and like i just you know i just feel like 
I gotta find that balance though, like that smaller balance, but is, is week it, by week. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I I struggle with this idea too because I do feel like I'm very phase oriented in like my work, and like I, I'm wondering if there's an inherent issue with that. You know what I'm saying? But I guess there kind of is because it's like you do need to be able to to get everything done on the checklist like seamlessly throughout the week. But I guess if you can't do it in long phases like months at a time, then then you just have to do it in mindset. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like when I'm doing business, my my creative artist brain has to just be numb a little bit. And when I'm when I'm making a song, I can't even think about the business shit because it that it, will also mess you up. It always fucks it up. Yeah. There's never a situation yeah. where you're sitting there making a song, you're like, oh, how am I gonna promote this? Uh, are people <laughs> yeah. gonna like this? Like, yeah. how is this gonna be responded to? Like, it's just it makes it a worse product. That's so how you make bad art. It's yeah, like, the the <laughs> recipe for shit art. Right. Absolutely. You kind of like gotta carve out like a dedicated time to work on each. Yeah. Like yeah. Like, yeah. Creativity is so chaotic that it's like very difficult to 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 create that you know what i'm saying like, yeah. yes so. dude I've, I've noticed this last night i was i was like making i was working on a song and i was just being created for like the first time in the during the whole week and it was like nighttime and the best things that i've written like for myself have like come out of the nighttime and mm. and like the um how candid and raw it feels for me to just be by my studio with a candle on and the lights down yeah, and, I love that. and whatever and and i honestly kind of felt like it was a hindrance to me because I was like, am I relying on the day, the mood? Like, could I could I make a song this good with this emotion in the daytime? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's good to draw from your influences, but when we're on a business schedule and we have creative schedules, yeah. like, it might be a hindrance to be like, the only time that I can get into that zone is yeah. 10 p.m. Yeah. and on. Yeah. You know and that's, I mean? that's maturing as a creative person, realizing that, and you said this in the Silver and Gold, like, teaser video, you said, Uh, something about creativity, but the only thing we control is when you allow it to happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm Mm -hmm. saying? And it's true. Like when, when you mature and actualize yourself as an artist, it's not just the random bouts of inspiration that you, that you can rely on anymore. If you want to make a a life and a career out of it, you have to learn how to just cultivate that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That, that needs to be something you can just draw whenever you need. Yes. I feel like I can uh, uh, relate it to like thinking about an actor wanting to cry on site yes you know what i mean yes like how do they get to that emotion it's because they've trained their creativeness and their mind to get to that point whenever they need to absolutely great analogy mr analogy over here for real dude i don't know what's good with me right now i'm just like i'm like in on fire dude i don't know (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. he's in fire i'm in fire fire. put a clip of me in fire (laughs) (laughs) you can Um, find joe in fire here (laughs) (laughs) it's so hard to find that like be creative right now and I have that discipline because yeah. like if you wait for creativity and like to be inspired you're never going to get anything done um, I so it's just it's yeah. just you have to yeah. like so it's just repetitiveness and practicing and just getting better to get in that zone yeah mm-hmm. Yo, also possible. something I'm, I will add that has been uh, the defining factor for me is c- routine obviously but also like prioritizing physical health prioritizing mental health prioritizing like all of these things because i think that creativity is is excess right like you have to like complete yourself first as a, as a human being and like your basic needs and functions yeah. before you can really tap into reliably tap into that like elevated state of consciousness that is creativity so mm-hmm. and i didn't like you don't get drugs silver and gold right. or love we're making without that yes mm-hmm. without what so you important. just said and, and I, I slept on it for for a really long time and yeah got and like big turning for, point for me is when i got my shit together and those other aspects of life so sure. wow. yeah wow. like we we all know the the typical artist story that's like bro you stay up all night yeah, like, like in the studio for 14 hours a day yeah. like that's all great but like what what is the quality of what you're making do you know what i mean like if you could achieve the same quality or better quality by maintaining a health a healthy lifestyle why not take that route absolutely you know mm-hmm. what i mean like absolutely <clears throat> i don't know that's that's where i find a disagreement between like studying jazz in college and studying what oh, we studied yeah, yeah do you yeah, know yeah. what i mean dive that could be that. A, that could be its own episode but dive, dive into, into that, that quick yeah <clears throat> well i mean really quick like i feel like it's so important for what we do being that like what we do is is a hundred percent creative mm-hmm. like we need to make sure our basic needs are met yeah we can't spend 14 hours in a practice room we so we can, true because right because then we walk nobody out nobody can and we feel nobody nobody. can yeah 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 right, right right no you're you're right but like if you're if you're studying a language <clears throat> i could see how that might get easier yeah to spend right. a lot more time yeah and also your your competition is is very um is very technical like like it's yeah. you're being judged on your ability to play your instrument better than the person next to you 
And like, I think that is not so clearly kind of seen in the work that we do because it's very subjective. Right. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So the only way to get the edge is to put more time in than the next guy and, and shit like that. You know what I mean? 100%. Like, but, but it's not like putting time in is a bad thing. It's no, no, just no, no, like, no. How like, you put your time in. It's how you put your yeah. time in. It's when you do it. And it's it's what you do before and after it, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, I like I always hear those stories about like Pharrell and like yeah. people who like will leave the studio with a hard cutoff at like 6 p.m. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're like, like this is family time yeah, now. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, it, it's, it's a Tuesday oh, night. There was, there was one rapper who I think it was uh, Gucci Mane. He had like a hard cutoff at a certain time because he was in jail for like a certain amount of years. And he's like, I never got to see like outside yes. and like I, I think he's said, yeah. yeah and yeah. he's like uh, I just have to appreciate this yeah. like my life right now because yeah, you man. can't spend if you spend all your day in the studio it's like you're not like living like yeah. other things in life and what do you yeah. have to draw from when it comes time to Work make something balance. meaningful you know right. what I'm exactly. saying you have exactly. no experience to to pull some actual genuine emotion out of you know yeah exactly. I feel like there's no um, there's no industry that or maybe there is but I don't feel like there's an industry that has perfected the work-life balance <clears throat> no absolutely not. like if you think absolutely about just not. the corporate world in general or just like the american culture there is no work-life balance mm -hmm. and there used no, to be there used to be but yeah. nobody but it, it's a grind culture and we we appreciate grind like like we're yeah. d definitely not saying but that. we have a different appreciation for it because our grind i feel like is based off of fulfillment and mm -hmm. it's not based off of money and power and and status you know what i'm right, saying like right. so I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of interesting. Yeah. And not saying not because you can obviously get fulfillment from any career, but I just feel of like course. there's a lot of like nine to five heads that just kind of do it for the for the money, not really. Absolutely, and nine I think five heads. nine to five heads is a funny way to put. It. <laughs> but I think heads. I mean this is biased because this is I'm part of this generation as well. But I think this generation is trying to push that boundary. Yeah, and be like I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, eh, never mind. What? No, Matt just uh, cutely put his foot on my foot. Oh <laughs> God! Cutely, <laughs> I'm trying to throw this kid off a little bit I mean, if I can. He, Joey is solid as a rock right now. Yeah, not getting he's hard as fuck. Dude, <laughs> I'm flaccid as hell though. <laughs> nah, I'm not. I'm kidding. I'm half chubbed. Anyway, <laughs> next question. I mean, you're sitting next to I'm me. I'm sitting so. next to you, and you're yeah. cute. Right. It's right. Um, question number four: Is Sunday dinner going to release more music? Yes. Have, yes. Yes. We are. Yes. We as, are. As an artist, we should clarify as an artist, because yeah. obviously we have since we made this transition. Sunday dinner as a collective entity has released probably over ten songs. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Wow. More. Am Something I bugging? like that. It could yeah. be more. Yes. Yes. Wait. Since what starting with point? Sophie since said Sophie with said. Uh, water with yeah. like yeah. Weird Marie. Yeah. Yeah. With, I mean, yeah. technically, even with our stuff too. That's right. What I'm, so, I'm considering that too. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so so there you go. Yeah. 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 Um. So yeah, but but Sunday Dinner as a band, and we're still kind of working out where like the Sunday Dinner artist page on Spotify fits into all of this. Mm -hmm. But Sunday Dinner as a band is definitely releasing more songs in the near future. We have like I think two or three that we really fuck with. Two in or the three vault right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that we are just yeah, like the these vault. are coming out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I, I we're still working this out. So I'm interested what other people might think of this. But like we've been thinking about turning the Sunday Dinner Spotify page into like a, a hub for our record label. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so, so rather than us being like this artist, it's more like every s s artist that we sign releases with Sunday dinner or, or some shit like that. And that way you go on our page and it's just an entire catalog of, of the stuff that we're, that we're all working on collectively. You right. Know? So yeah. you, you would see like Nick Spat's new song on the Sunday dinner Spotify, as well as his Spotify. Right. Mm -hmm. Like we're thinking about starting to integrate every release so that it just all uploads to the Sunday dinner as well. Yeah. To the Hell Sunday yeah. dinner Spotify. Yeah. I love that. I yeah. feel like that, that's kind of our next move. Definitely. We should do that. Definitely. Yeah. We can yeah. do it with like even playlists. You know what I'm saying? Like we have a, we have a, a Sunday dinner music group, like master playlist on our Spotify mm -hmm. right now, but we can even make like Nick Spat playlist, a Kalea playlist, a Matthew playlist. You know what I'm saying? That would be cool yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Super cool interesting. Too. Lots of ideas on the table. So sick. Yeah. So the answer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hard Don't yes. you worry. Hard yes. Not a soft one. <clears throat> okay. I like this question a lot. Next. Vin, read this question. <laughs> question five. Next question. While creating, how do you react when you feel like you failed? Whoa. Usually just give up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's I mean, really, really inspirational. Yeah. Like, I'm usually just like, all right, I couldn't make a song today, so let me just not ever make a song again. Yeah. You know what I mean? Basically, yeah. Yep. I like that mentality. Yeah, I think that's really strong. <laughs> how about like failing with other people in the room? 
Yeah. Like you're just watching someone fa- like fail, or you're watching yourself fail. Yeah. <laughs> like you're just in front of other people. <laughs> in front yeah. of other people. Yeah. Like this guy's epic failing right now. Right? <laughs> yeah. No. Um. The funny thing is, is that everyone knows that feeling in the room. Yeah. So they all understand oh, yeah. if they're good collaborators. Mm-hmm. And I think the people we work with are all good collaborators. So I would yeah. agree with that. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, hard. it's a hard I, thing to no, get over. No. Yeah. The only thing is that when I, I feel like if somebody fails in front of me, I don't even care. No. And, and my my problem is like accepting that other people don't care when i fail yeah it's so yeah, hard yeah, yeah. man like, i feel embarrassed like, yeah even with you guys like my closest like Dude, friends yeah. and collaborators you guys are like, the people that i feel the most embarrassed yeah, in front right, of because you, i respect yeah. the fuck out and of we you know guys. each other the most yeah we know also very deeply what we're all capable of yeah. individually so it's like when you're not living up to that like expectation that you've set up in your head it's like oh my god like do they think i suck like what the fuck yeah yeah definitely definitely it's but just I fear. feel like when when you know people as well as we all know each other it's like all right He's having a bad day. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. The same right. way that like corporate America, you walk into your job and like, you know, your dog died the day before. You're having a bad day. Right. Yeah. You know, you're having a really bad right. day. And like, they might not let you like be be cool with your bad mood that day. But like, right. I don't know, like in Sunday dinner, I think I'd like to think we're pretty empathetic with that stuff. Course, you know what I mean? Like we're yeah. absolutely like you're still going to have the job after the bad day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Like we're yeah. still, we're don't still good me. like producers <laughs> and collaborators. For sure. hundred percent. But you know what For I started sure. doing actually? My, and my, my therapist put me onto this shit. Okay. It's like you you write down the thing that you're judging, the thought that you're judging, mm-hmm. the experience you're going through on a piece of paper, you know? And you look at it and you don't judge it for the first time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because when it's in your head, all you're able to do is just be like, I didn't write a song today. I wasn't creative. Right. Oh, I suck. And you know what? Last week I, I had the same thing. Like last week it sucked for me too. I, I must I must be a bad artist. You start labeling right. yourself and this is all like below the conscious. Like this is like subconscious. Like this is just your experience as yeah. a creative person who is right. attached to what you do. Right. And so what I did uh, two days ago was just that I wrote it down and I had therapy the next day and I walked in. And I was like, yo, like it worked. And mm, she was so like, cool. wow. Fire. How'd you feel after that? Like writing it down and processing it? I felt phenomenal and the timing was great too. So I, I had like a pretty bad day, mm-hmm. wrote it down at night, put everything aside, went to sleep, got like a full eight hours, woke up the next morning and nice. I was a different man. Mm. Sleeping mm. man, sleeping on it. Sleeping That's on great. it. That's crazy. So nice. um, is that akin to like not judging your thoughts? Like, yes. uh, like uh, identifying with the fact that you're not your thoughts? Yes. Is that what you're saying? That's kind of exactly what yes. that is. Do you know what I mean? Because yes. the more you identify with your thoughts, the more they are subject to judgment. Mm. Yes. Do you know? Yes. And the more they influence your actions too. Exactly. But the thing that's tricky about that, because I understand that dichotomy, and that's like a, obviously a hard thing to work on, but I find it even harder to, because we identify so deeply with the work that we make as creatives because it inherently is a piece of us. So it's very hard to separate from that because it is us you know yeah. what i'm saying mm-hmm. so i i think but you're not separating though you're you're um acknowledging it and accepting it mm-hmm. you're not you're not saying this is not me i reject this you're saying this is me and i'm okay with it being me you that's know what it I'm saying? that's it yeah right. but no you have a crazy point with the identification thing yeah wow because like if we're not our thoughts i'm about to blow your mind oh here we go uh, here we, we go oh my god we Let's are do it. not our oh art we are not do you guys hear that we are again. not our art. Dude, okay, uh, please Fuck. sell me on this. Okay, so so again, back in therapy, we talk about this a lot because she's basically telling me, she's like, I, I noticed something with you. I'm like, what is that? She's like, well, when you have a lot of like creative energy and like you write a lot of songs and, and you go to Vancouver and you, and you work on songs every day for two weeks straight, you are, everything is, is solved in your life. Yeah. You're just in a good spot. Mm. And she's like, I think that's because you're so tied in with your art. Yeah. And I'm like, like, yes, yes, that that's true. But like, also like, I'm not going to not do art just so that I can like regulate my emotions. <laughs> do you know? I, wait, no, wait. I, I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> that and sounds detrimental. I'm not going to not do art. What if art is a regulation of your emotions though? Well, I think when there's identification is. with it though. That's where that becomes skewed. It's almost like corruption in a way. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like you you can't not like like you can't not have the emotional sways because inevitably in art you're gonna have good art and bad art and yeah. good decisions, bad decisions. Okay, yeah. I think I can I can add to that. This is crazy. The the you have said this, especially I remember from your silver and gold trailer, that art is manic. 
And I feel like as artists, our job is to take the thresholds of mania and just kind of pull them in a little bit. Like you, like the the idea that you can get so manically high off of a fucking oh amazing idea. Mm -hmm. Like your job isn't to fucking like get rid of your mania and whatever. No. It's, it's your it's your job as an artist to regulate it. Regulate the fact that the low lows need to come up and that the high highs they could be there, but they they need to drop down a level. Like like I don't know. I feel like if you if you can figure out that it's too high, then like you're in the wrong place. Like that's because you are just as susceptible to to burning and crashing. Even it, it, you know you you crash harder when you're higher, right? Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know. I I feel like um, I feel like we do identify with our emotions though, and and the whole idea and the the advice that I've heard from psychology is that you you can should feel your emotion and you should understand it, but you should not let it dictate a reaction that is like detrimental to you yes. or somebody else. That's kind you. of what I'm saying. Sure. Like yeah. Regulation. Yeah, regulation. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so I think that like you can identify with a piece of art as being a piece of you, but it's just a piece of you in that moment, right? And tomorrow when I wake up, I'm a different person. Mm. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that was me yesterday. And maybe I don't love that. That's fine. You know I have what a I'm funny saying? way to say it. And maybe and I, if I, I do like the me that created this thing and I do like the way it turned out, then then it's fine. And yeah. yes. you know what I'm saying? But but do you see what you just did there? What? Was instead of controlling the emotions, you controlled the reaction to the yeah, emotions. Exactly. Yes. But and I still, that's the key. You right. can't control emotions. No. Like emotions are inevitable. No, but if you the more you control them, the worse they become. Exactly. Yeah. But mm -hmm. but how you evolve as a human being, and in our case as as artists who are dedicated to a, a craft that we identify with, it's changing the way that you react to to failure. Yes. And so this kind of ties oh in with god, the question. Oh my god, dude. That was wow. full fucking circle. <laughs> Holy oh, shit. shit, bro. No, dude. Oh, man, my head is dizzy. <laughs> that was crazy. All right, we're back. We just had to adjust the ISO on the camera because it's getting dark in here. But we're having we're in the middle of such a crazy like self discovery like like actualization conversation beautiful. and all thoughts I've been having recently too and trying to work out. So it's like it's really fire to like actually hash this out for sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so for our next deeply. Um, <laughs> you know, emotional and just like transcendental com uh, <laughs> question. Is Taylor Swift fire or not? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is such a hard All right, I'll go, I'll go first. Great segue. Um, <laughs> great segue. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, um, Let, let's, um, let's just start this with the fact that we probably have Swifties following us and we don't want Swifty Nation to destroy us on episode two. I'm a Swifty though. <laughs> okay. I've, I've made the, I've made the, the trans transition to a Swifty. You have. I absolutely What's have. your favorite song? By August. 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 You don't. You don't like September. <laughs> <laughs> that's Green, that's green no, Day song. You know what it is, bro. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say that's a disco I, song. I I fully respect your opinion. If you love Taylor Swift, I fully respect your opinion. If you don't, but shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! Like, no, genuinely, bro. <laughs> like coming specifically at the people who we need a button. Are you saying that's a hot? <laughs> <day>? <laughs> no, but like who? Like what happened? Like who are you saying? I just I up? think people just th like some people hate on Taylor Swift because they think it's trendy and 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 badass and like punk, and then some people just are like just listen to somebody else. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she she's a, an excellent artist. She wouldn't have billions of streams. She wouldn't have the most successful tour ever if she wasn't a brilliant artist. I just don't, I don't see the, 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 the connection. I agree there, but I like her music. I appreciate it for what it is. Do I listen to her every day? No, but I think she's, she's a quality artist and, and she's great. That, yeah, yeah that, that's kind of where I align is that it's like, you, you can understand that Taylor Swift's music might not be for you, but you can't take away the fact that it's authentic and people are authentically relating to yes. her thoughts and ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's such a big part of it. I like my younger sister, shout out Jamie. She's a fucking <laughs> Swifty. She had diehard Swifty. <laughs> and you know what? Taylor talks about young love. And, and once you realize that and accept that, like, it's not catered to you. Like, you you might not relate to it, can't, but that doesn't mean you can't respect it for what it is. Yes. That, that's where I... It ties into our conversation <clears throat> in episode one about country music, too. I think it's the same idea, right? Bro, you, I was just about to <laughs> yeah. say that yeah. shit. Yeah. Jeez, man. The alignment also, is crazy. a lot of artists talk about young love. It's just presented in a different way. But that's I so feel true. like I, w I was on the trendy hate Taylor wave. Yeah. Now I'm like slowly getting out of that. Yeah, I was. I'm like I'm kind of indifferent. I right dude, now. yeah, this, I was deep recent. into that. Yeah. I was recent. Definitely, I was yeah. deep into it. I had a conversation with some buddies um, about it, like 
a month ago probably and i i found myself actually defending taylor swift mm. and i was like what's happening right now yeah um yeah she's an artist at the end she's of the day a great artist, and we bro. are artists and, yeah and you know what we're gonna defend that yeah absolutely i could just see you in the car like on the way home like what's happening to me yeah. i'm defending taylor swift <laughs> like, now? what the fuck am i a yeah. swifty <laughs> uh dude and like the whole NFL like Taylor Swift thing is so crazy because like oh yeah it like it really just goes to show like how much of a control she has over media and like and she her yeah. her, her fans like they they just are diehard for her yeah. you know what I mean and yeah. and like that's something you can really like strive for as an artist is like my people like will fucking ride or die for me you know what I mean and like we, uh, we could cut this out if we all disagree but I feel like this is an like important thing to say I feel like the difference between like a Swifty fan and someone that's not a diehard fan is okay like we fucking love Taylor so we're gonna watch football on Sunday and we're gonna learn the rules to football and we're gonna watch it and we're gonna wait for her cameos you know what I mean like that is literally the most dead like that is just the craziest dedication that I've yeah. ever fucking seen yeah. people yeah, are actually yeah. doing that dude yeah, you absolutely. don't think that my sister is in a I swear I'm she's watching like God, what's she's her name? wearing a Chiefs jersey what's his name S Travis Kelsey they were, he, they were watching like Travis Kelsey whatever team he's on yeah the Chiefs, awesome. the Chiefs. dude like, wow like I don't know, bro. That that shit is crazy. And like I'm not like that. Obviously, I fucking She's got a chokehold. I, I, I I'm my favorite <laughs> era of Taylor Swift is nineteen eighty nine, so I've been over the moon about the the Taylor's version dropping. Like um that's the kind of shit that I'm into for, from her. Um and the OG speak now. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. like, you know what I mean? So it's just crazy. Yeah. Anything you wow. want to add? I feel like you didn't get to say if you're a, t a Swifty or not. No, I mean like my dislike for the music made me paint this image of her that that wasn't preferable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, sure. like and, millennial. Yeah, kind of like I was derogatory. Like, oh, like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could like, see that, and like she's got that millennial energy to her. Sure, sure, For but sure. I mean, we all write we all write songs about the same things sometimes. You know what I mean? And, yeah, and she's I, a little corny. I really think that, like, from a business perspective and from an artist perspective, like she's got that shit on lock. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can't hate on her. Better like, than I agree anyone with else, that. probably. And she knows where her inspiration comes Definitely. from. Her, and if she's if she's like on that same wave that we were just talking about, which, which I'm sure she is, she knows where she's going to get her inspiration and she draws from it. Right. You know what I mean? That Absolutely. just means she's in tune with her inspiration. And, and you guys have like opened me up to that perspective. Do you know what I mean? Really? Sure. That's oh great. yeah, no, hundred percent. I didn't like, I didn't really consider that as an option before, but like wow. th the same way that we don't like, or we didn't like country music or yeah. uh, the three of us. Right. Yeah. You know, I just, I, I think like the same way that like, <laughs> you don't have to love Taylor Swift, you know yeah, what sure. I mean? Yeah. Like, but yeah. you can appreciate it and you can, and, you know yeah like you said before as as somebody who now co-owns a record label you need to be able to to hop on board to a vision that you normally wouldn't put yourself onto you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah and that's an important skill i think for for anyone who's in this industry but i think also just as a consumer of of art you should also kind of understand that and like yeah. your your taste is important and there are things that you like and don't like but i don't think that because you dislike something it 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 devalidates that thing. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. But like it's it's also so simple to take the stance of I hate Taylor Swift. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Because, like, Especially because hate... of the, the magnitude of how much people like her. Like of it creates course, an equal, equal and opposite reaction in the, you know what I'm saying? But we against, always uh, see that. We, yeah. Like people it's who cool. have big lovers <laughs> have big haters. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah, what like, I mean? Like nobody has crazy conversations about just genuinely mid artists. You know what I'm saying? Right, like, right. No one's exactly. like, I fucking hate them. Like you just don't care. Yeah. You know, because there's not all you know, a million fucking teenage girls like paying my cousins went to see her in like Kansas or like some shit like that. And like the flight it's, to Kansas and like all that shit was still less expensive than just buying a ticket and seeing her in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. My family's experiencing the same thing. Absurd. It's crazy. You think if the, if the chiefs um, go to the Super Bowl and let's say in the future and Taylor plays at the, Halftime show. Oh my god! Oh my like, god! Hypothetically, you think half the stadium would just be Taylor Swift fans? Absolutely. Because they'll see you at a yeah. cheaper, yeah, Dude, cheap ticket. This you know? is me being like, like I'm now I'm riding this too hard, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Taylor does not even need to play the Super no, Bowl. No, she owns no, the NFL. She owns, she the, owns NFL. the NFL right now, and yeah. she doesn't Killing. even need to play. Yeah. She she could sell out MetLife so quick, and whatever stadium it would be. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. no dude, dude, even reason. Yes. She she has more screen time on NFL games than like the the like defensive Rihanna coordinator during her fucking <laughs> yeah. like Super Bowl halftime show, yeah. like a full thirty minute set. Like it's crazy. It's absurd. It's absurd. That's fun. Bro, think about how dangerous it would be if someone of her like like size was in politics. Do you know oh what I mean? Oh my gosh! Like yeah, she she can literally like like put forty thousand people in one spot like on the. 
flash of yeah. I was in LBI over the wow. summer. Oh, we were yeah, just she like was, chilling. She was there, right? She pulled up at the end of the week and it made news. Yeah. Chrissy told me that too. He said there was a fu- he was there that same weekend. He said there was a fucking crowd of like people like trying to figure out where she was. Yo, like, someone like insane. someone tipped like Instagram off or something like that. You know what I mean? Someone posted her yeah. and all of a sudden there's like what 10,000 people like crowding dude. the house that she was at? That's why. Dude. dude, actually the craziest thing in the world. Fucked up. Craziest thing. Um I just want to bring up one more thing because I think it's kind of an interesting topic. Um, how does somebody who, like Olivia Rodrigo, who caters to the same demographic of fans, yeah, why why do mm. why do we feel like she's more authentic? Or like like why why do I like Olivia Rodrigo? Like I'm a super fan of Olivia Rodrigo. Probably I'm not a super fan of Taylor. Right. What What's the difference? Is it the generation? Do I just align with Olivia because she's from my generation? That's like my initial thought is that it's so, she's so like on the curve. It feels like Olivia, yeah, like yeah, her yeah. music is, is like Taylor's music is Taylor's music. The same way that Adele sound is Adele sound. Right, but, and then Olivia right. is riding the wave. She's her fingers on the pulse. Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, take away anything that doesn't have to do with music taste. Mm-hmm. And, and you tell me why you like Olivia more. Um, fuck man. That's so hard. Oh Yeah. That is hard. Take away music, you said? No, 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 no. Take away, like, the fact that Taylor is from a different generation. Mm -hmm. Take away the fact that, like, she's very polarizing and very controversial. And now tell me, like, just whose music do you like better and why? Oh, I like Olivia's music better, just like... I'm sorry, why do you like her music better? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's it's taste, I think. I like like the sounds, and I like the whatever, and um, I like the direction that she's headed in. I just... I don't know. I, I feel like... I do genuinely feel like Olivia and and Daniel Nigro like are just genuinely like trying to 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 push things. You know yeah, what I mean? They, their music sure. is really good, and it's really cool to me where I can like be like blown away by like the 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 risk taking and just the interesting production choices on Olivia track, and then like a fourteen year old girl in my in my guitar lesson is asking me how to play this That's this song so cool. yeah. because she's listening do to it on think, the radio. Yeah. Do you think that? like longevity wise that that is a a like a good model to follow like break it down like this sure if a live if taylor has taylor sound and someone like adele will always inherently have adele sound yeah. is it a good business model to follow the the wave right because like then you follow what wave like like staying on the pulse of things Right. Oh, like because you're, you're saying Taylor is gonna drop like a trap album in in 2024 or like a hyper pop album. And no, like, like, it, it feels like should she? You're saying should she? And also, does Olivia like first name basis? Does <laughs> <laughs> um, does Olivia Rodrigo like? Is she always gonna be able to be on the pulse? Mm. Is she, like is that what mm. defines someone that is just a, a generational talent? You know, like because because yeah. how do you stay on the pulse for ten years? Or do you? Or does she cultivate a sound while staying on the pulse? Fuck. That's a. I, I think she should probably do both, honestly. But do when both. the when the art is so good, like I'm just gonna use like John Mayer. You know right. what I mean? Like like you go to John Mayer for John Mayer, not because he he was really good at staying on the pulse. Yeah, I agree. But but then I he agree. did he did the '80s thing with New Light, like when that was starting to to pop off, and that song blew up. But his last album is like not. But he any mixed attention. it with John Mayer sound. Which he, was cool. he did, he did, but he he was on the pulse, I think, with that one. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, so I, is I it kind of like a just okay? I'm gonna stay on the pulse, and I'm also I'm gonna stay authentic to myself at the same time and find a mix. I think you can do both because both are timeless, right? It's timeless to 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 create something. Adele has created something, mm-hmm. right? Adele is now a genre of music. Taylor is now a genre of music, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. they don't have to have the finger on the pulse of anything because they've already created something timeless. Yeah. But it's also timeless for Kanye to just influence the fucking entire music industry with every album that he drops. Yeah. That's in a completely different way. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's also timeless of him to just change it every single time. Yeah. yeah. So I think they're both, you both know, applicable for sure. Both applicable, both applicable. I think the, 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 the genuine way to go about it is to just be like, I'm going to be a culmination of my influences. And as the industry changes, yeah. I'll change with it because not because I'm trying to follow it, because I'm in, being influenced by the things that I'm hearing. Yeah. And it's fun. And just let it happen it's fun organically. to try the new things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. It, there's like, it's, it's lit. Yeah. You do something new. Yeah. By definition, like an artist is someone who pulls from their, in, their uh, influences yeah. around yeah. them. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so if, if Olivia Rodrigo is like, you know, listening to, to the new shit that's happening, you know, she's probably going to go for it. She's probably going to take a stab at that hyper-pop yeah. beat, you know? Interesting. I don't know, but, like, 
that being said, like people who stick with the trend that corny? solely, they like, yeah, it's, it's tough because yeah. people who are trying to predict like the next trend is like, I don't know. It's like, like the eighties with like all that giant sound and stuff. You know what I mean? Like you're trying to predict the next thing. Is that what you're saying? Like more so people who are like, yo, like. I need to get on like the the next thing that like Drake is gonna go for. Right. Like, mm. oh, he just started doing house stuff again. Let's right. let's start doing house stuff. You know yeah, what I mean? Exclusively. Right. Like the the trend chasers. Yeah, and you know what? That's so true because I feel like if you're asking that question, like, oh, Drake just put out a house thing. Let me do a house thing. You've already missed it. This has been at the dinner table, episode two. I'm Matthew. I'm Joe. I'm Nick. I'm Vinny. And this is this. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) no, but it's the Sunday dinner logo. Yeah, I'll edit that in right here. Let's let's all do it. Let's all do it. What are we doing? The Disney thing? No, the Sunday dinner logo. Start with the circle. Start with the circle. Let's draw the fork fork on the left. Fork on the left. Three prongs. One, two, three. One, two, three. And the knife. There we go. Good. All right. Shout out. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe. Peace out. Alright, so actually who farted before? I swear, what am I? What am I breaking?